Hello, I'm Clark Zeller. I'm a sales engineer with Live Action. This video is to highlight how you can utilize Live Action for QoS configuration. Let's take a look at Live Action and let me show you what I'm talking about. So on my network map, I am looking at two devices that Live Action is currently managing. The device to the left is labeled Data Center and the device to the right is labeled Remote Site. Between them, they are connected to a cloud labeled MPLS WAN. So Live Action has several QoS configuration capabilities and we will walk through each of those in this video. So the first capability we're going to discuss is the best practice configuration templates built into Live Action. Let's say I want to deploy a best practice configuration to this remote site device's WAN interface. What I can do is right click on that interface, go to QoS and create policy from template. We'll then be given a series of menus that allow us to very easily deploy the appropriate QoS policy to this device. I'm going to select our advanced templates and I'm going to apply this policy in the output direction of our WAN interface. We'll then be presented with a list of all of the best practice configuration templates built into Live Action. Whether if I want to go with an 11 class QS model or maybe the latest 12 class MediaNet QS model, maybe I'm just getting started with QS and I just need a 3 or maybe a 4 class QS model. All of those type of policies are built into the tool. I'm going to select a 4 class WAN edge policy in this example. I'll click next. I won't implement a shaper and here is what that policy will look like. I'll then click next and Live Action is right now deploying that best practice template to my device. Now that that has been deployed, if I double click on this device, I can now see that my best practice configuration has been applied to the output side of my WAN interface. The next capability I'd like to discuss is Live Action's ability to automatically discover any of your own custom QoS policies that may already be in your network environment. If I was to say right click on my data center device, go to QoS and apply policy to interfaces, Live Action will go out and parse this device's configuration and allow me to select any of the found QoS policies. I'm going to select this set DSCP policy, for example, and I'm going to check to apply it to the input side of VLAN 1 and click OK. Live Action is now pushing that policy to that interface for me. If I double click on this device, I can now see where my input side of VLAN 1 now has that set DSCP policy applied to it. Next, I'd like to discuss Live Action's QoS configuration management capabilities. If I right click on my data center device, go to QoS and manage QoS settings, I will see an intuitive GUI that will allow me to create, edit, as well as deploy QoS policies throughout my network. To the top left of the screen, I see a list of the policies that Live Action automatically discovered. If I was to select that set DSCP policy to the center of the screen, I can see a summary of how this policy is created. If I was to select, say, the match video class underneath the set DSCP policy and look at the classify tab, here I can see the interesting traffic that will be part of my match video class. If I was to click on the marking tab, I can see where we are setting the DSCP value of AF41 to anything that matches our video traffic. Now let's say I want to update or edit this policy. Maybe I want to add a new match type to my video class. Well, all I have to do is select edit and then all of the match criteria are available in our match type dropdown. Whether if I want to match on access list, DSCP value, Procall using NBAR or even the latest NBAR2 groups. It's all here. Maybe I'll select our NBAR2 groups in this example. Maybe I'll then select our peer-to-peer -peer technology group. I'll add that as a match type and now notice this third match criteria has now been added to my match video policy. One thing to note is as you're making changes in this GUI, you're not actually updating the remote device. If you click Preview CLI, you can see where Live Action is creating the appropriate QoS configuration to be pushed to your end device, but not until you actually click Save to Device will that configuration change be pushed. Let's say I wanted to create a new policy from scratch. I can definitely do that too with Live Action. I'm going to click my Add Policy button, give it a name, 
I'll give it the name of test, and here's that new test policy with the class default already assigned. Now if I want to add a new class to this policy, it's just a matter of right-clicking and then selecting any of the pre-discovered classes that Live Action found. I'm going to select the Match Video class. There's that Match Video class now assigned to my test policy. Notice how in the Classify section, all of the match criteria automatically got copied over for me. I never had to reinvent that wheel. For now, I'm going to remove that match video class from my test policy, and since the class default's highlighted, I'm going to put a shaper on that class default. Maybe I'll give it a value of that. And now that I have a shaper in place, I want to make this a hierarchical or two-tiered policy. All I have to do from here is click, drag, and drop another policy on top of my class default, and that simply I have a new hierarchical policy created. We do have a hierarchical policy wizard where I could have set the parent, the class, and the child policy. And most importantly, let's say that this test policy is now going to become a new corporate standard. I want to roll out to the rest of my environment. Well, if I click this icon here, a copy policy to devices icon, go and select that test policy. In this case, I'm going to check to apply it to the remote site. I'm going to now push this policy out to my remote site. But wait, live action found a conflict. If I want to, I could drill down and see what those conflicts are. It looks like I have some policies that already exist with the same names on that remote site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to overwrite that conflict. That change was successful. And what just happened is live action ensured that this test policy that we're looking at here in this dialog window was copied and an exact replica will end up on that remote site. As well, any access list that may be tied to this test policy will also get copied over appropriately to the remote site in this example. Live Action can also log all configuration changes made from the tool. So if we want to go investigate what exactly happened when we push that test policy to the remote site device, what I could do is come to our alert section of the tool, and then I could find the actual log message that corresponds to that change. and I can see details of the timestamp that the change was made, who made the change, as well as what configuration parameters were actually pushed as part of this change. Notice how the device just went amber as well as the interface itself just went amber. So that's a very good indication that we are having drops on this device. Now if I want to drill down into the performance stats in real time, all I have to do is double click on the interface. Notice how we now have a new bandwidth graph that's very smooth, uh, indicating that there's a traffic shaper in place in this new policy. We can also see in the table view of the QS policy that some of the classes or queues are amber. Notice how one of them is labeled VoIP. If I was to right click on that amber VoIP class, notice how we are actively receiving drops in this VoIP class with the red line that's appearing in this queue's real-time performance statistics. So what's very unique about live action is we actually have the ability to fix this QS issue on the fly. I've just right clicked on that QS policy and went to adjust just output QoS, and what we now see is a summary of the QoS policy on this interface. Notice how we have the class names, the queue types, the bandwidth reservations. We also can see that there is a traffic shaper on this interface. And to the bottom of the screen, we have a pie graph indicating the percentage breakdown of how bandwidth has been allocated to the various queues. Looking back up at the top of this window, notice how our VoIP class is a priority queue, but someone configured it with only 1% uh, of the bandwidth. I'm going to change that and make it say 20%, what may be a better number in this example. Notice our pie graph update appropriately to 20% for our VoIP class. I like that, so I'm going to save this change to the, my device. Live Actions just push that change for me, and in a couple moments when SNMP catches up, let's see if our VoIP class doesn't change behavior. Notice how our VoIP class, or queue, is no longer amber. If I was to right-click on it, and we can see in the real-time queue statistics that we are no longer dropping traffic in our VoIP class. But do notice how our class default is still amber. That indicates that it is dropping some uh, level of data, but this is actually good. That means our high priority voice, video, etc. are all being protected, but our best effort traffic is what's being selectively dropped. If I come back to my home screen, notice how now all of my interfaces are again green, my devices are green, I have now fixed the QoS issue. 
Live action can also be used to manage access lists. There are several ways we can do this in the tool, but one very effective way is based off the flow information that Live Action collects. Live Action is a NetFlow collector, and what we can do is we can create access lists as well as modify access lists based off the flow records themselves that are being received. I'm going to double click on this data center device and we now will see a list of the raw real-time flow information that is being received by this device. I'm going to highlight a flow, right click on this flow and go to create ACL based on flow. Notice how the various parameters of the access list were automatically filled in for me from the flow information. Now I could create a brand new access list or I could modify an existing access list. I'm going to create a new access list. I'm going to call it Site A ACL. And I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to now save that information to my data center device. If I come back to my home screen, right click on my data center device, go to device tools, and manage ACLs, here I can see a list of all of the pre existing access lists that were discovered on this device, as well as that new Site A ACL that I just created. Now actually I want to edit this Site A ACL. It's a little too detailed for me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and click Edit ACL and then I'm going to edit the actual one rule of the ACL. And I want this to actually be a very generic ACL, so I'm going to say Permit IP and I'm going to make it a source of any and then the destination I want to actually be a destination network slash 24, so I think that looks pretty good. And so now that I've updated that rule, I think that rule looks fine, I'm going to uh, click Save to Device, and here we can see my Site A ACL has been updated appropriately. Now I'm going to copy my Site A ACL, click Copy, and I'm going to call it Site B ACL, and I think that looks fine. I'm going to edit the one rule that was copied from Site A's ACL, and I'll edit that rule. I'm going to make the destination network be, say, 221. I think that looks pretty good, and I will save that rule. Now I'm going to copy Site B's ACL in the same way. I'll click Copy ACL. I'm going to put a name of Site C ACL. And just like we've done before, I'm going to update the one rule that is within this ACL. I'm going to make this say dot two two three the slash 24 network. That looks pretty good. I'll save that to the device. And now I should have three access list sites A, B, and C defined and I'll review them. That all looks pretty good. So I'm going to close this screen and go back to my QoS tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now show you how I can create a multi-class hierarchical QoS policy based off those access lists. So again, I'm going to right click on my data center device, go to QoS and manage QoS settings. This will bring up our manage QoS dialog window and I'm going to create that multi-class hierarchical QoS policy. I'll give it a name like say multi-site Shaper, for instance, and that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class, and I'll say Add Class, and my new class will be called Site A. And then I'm going to create another new class, and this will be called Site B. And I'll create a third class, and I will call this third class Site C. And there's my three classes defined. And I'm going to go ahead and save that to my device. But if you notice in the summary of this new QS policy, there's a red dot under the classify section indicating that there's no uh, rules that are matching interesting traffic to these three new classes. So now that I have my Site A class highlighted, I'm going to come to the classify section and I will match based off of a access list name and I will use my site A ACL that we just created. I think that looks pretty good. And what I can also do from my classify tab is I can update and modify each site as you would expect from this page as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the sake of time and I'm going to ensure that each one of my classes is utilizing just its corresponding access list. So now when I come back to my policies tab, site A is matching access list, site A, B is matching B, site C is matching C, that all looks good. So now what we need to do to make this a hierarchical policy is I'm going to put a shaper on each one of these sites. And for my first shaper, I'm going to put a value of like say 
1500K. So about T1's worth of data. And I'm going to come to site B and I'm going to do something very similar. Maybe I'll just put a a uh, fraction of a T1, maybe I'll just put a thousand K or one megabit for this guy, just as an example, and for my site C, my third site, maybe I'll make this one two megabits. And so now that I have shapers enabled on each of these sites, what I'm going to do is just click, drag, and drop a queuing policy onto each one, and that simply I will have created a multi-class hierarchical QoS policy. So I'm just going to click, drag, and drop this queuing policy onto site A, the same queuing policy on site B, and I'll do it a third time for site C, and that simply I now have my multi-class hierarchical QoS policy in place. So if I wanted to implement this new policy on, say, the WAN interface, all I need to do is come to the Interface tab, remove any existing policy from the WAN interface, instead apply that new policy I just created. I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to save that change to my data center device. I'll close this window, and then I'll double click on my data center device, and notice how my new multi-site shaper policy has now been applied to the WAN interface, and that simply I have implemented a multi-class hierarchical QoS policy into my network. This concludes our video on QoS configuration management with live action. Thank you so much for watching.